them. God wants us to give to him. He wants us to come today. Take it off your shoulders right now. Put your hands on your shoulders right now. Now drop it to the floor. Come on, Rosemary. No. That he climbed off that cross and is picking it up right now. You, I don't want you to leave here the same way you walked in. You want to know why? Because then you're telling him, I got this. I don't need you. Where he's telling you, I want to want you and your stuff. I, my shoulders are as broad as this world. I've got it. Don't bring a bunch of bags to take it out with. Leave it here. Because I loved you enough to die for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to the Holy of Holies right now. Some of us are crawling in. Some of us are staggering in. And some of us are just running in. Jesus, I want to sit down beside you right now. I want to lay my head on your shoulders. I got some stuff, Lord, that's heavy on my heart. I know the promises you said. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you always. Ask and you shall be given. Jesus, I mourn and I'm asking. I shouldn't ask for another thing because of all the blessings that you've already given. But you told us to keep on asking because you're like that daddy that wants the child to come to him always in good times and in bad. Father God, I ask that you send the spirit from heaven to touch every heart standing here today and those that are watching live stream. They need you, Father God. And we are putting our trust and our hope in you. Even if our faith right now is as small as a grain of sand, you said, even on that little bit of faith, that you'd be there for us. Father God, I ask that you grant the needs of the people before us. It'll be in your time, in your will, and in your way. And in the meantime, God, I pray the pouring down of the Holy Spirit that you give them patience, that you give them strength, and they give you, as they give you hope in a future. Because, Father God, you told us you would be there for us. I don't want these people going out the same way they came in. I want them to feel the refreshing, heartfelt message from the Holy Spirit, from the throne room, from your lips to these people's hearts, Father God. Give them peace. Give them hope and give them strength no matter what they're going through. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
love. That's love. Hallelujah. Amen. Good morning hymn is there's power in the blood. So as we stand together for our congregational hymn, celebrating this first Sunday in August, how many of you know there's power in the blood of Jesus? Jesus. Take time and greet your neighbor. It's fellowship time.
family, if we can start uh, walking back to our seats and transitioning back. What a blessed day we have. Wow, can you believe it? We're in August already. Whew. Where has the summer gone? Good morning, Trinity. God is good, and he is worthy. Aren't you glad? So glad. Amen. Well, this month is a rather very busy month. I have a lot of announcements today, so you might want to grab a pen and a piece of paper to write a few things down. I'm going to direct us to our bulletin to start off with. Um, next Sunday, August 12th, I believe we have the new members orientation, and I believe you would see Cheryl Norman. Cheryl, are you here? Oh, Bonnie, back there. Wave your hand, Bonnie. Next Sunday at 12.30 p.m., new member orientation. And let's not forget, August, Sunday, August 19th, we're having um, the celebration of Dr. Karen Love right after service at 1.30. And on August 25th, mark it down, ladies. You're going to be asked to bring a dish. Oh, and guys, too. I know some of you can cook, too. So Sunday, August 26th, we will have our friends and family picnic. Invite your friends, your family, and your neighbors, and come and just have a good time celebrating with us. Okay. Our children's church will meet directly after the choir um, song today. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> And um, copies of the worship service are, will be available over here to my right after service if you would care for a copy. Um, see the media team. And then um, some additional announcements that we have. Men's fellowship will resume, I believe, in September. And ladies, 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 mark your calendars. Saturday, August 18th. At 10 a.m., our Women's Fellowship resumes, and I'm so, so excited. We are going to be doing Hebrew word study, and the word is love. Seeing, hearing, and experiencing God's love. Finding God's oral law, love through the original Hebrew language. God loves us. And he loves us through his words. Amen? So please mark your calendars, ladies, Saturday, August 18th. Also, um, let's see. Next week, um, Deborah will be doing announcements. But uh, No, Bonnie will be doing announcements next week. She will be filling in for Deborah. Okay. And I need, um, I want to give the mic over just for a moment to um, Reverend L Karen Love. She wanted to speak a few words. Here she comes. Good morning, Trinity. Good morning. Oh, you guys sound tired. Good morning, Trinity. Good morning. Good morning. I'm just excited. I think when I don't sleep, I have more energy. I don't know what it is. I haven't drank a lot of caffeine, but I got a lot of energy today. But I just want to, uh, just to invite you all to come and celebrate with me. I'm celebrating my graduation, and I, want, I asked Rev if I could do it at Trinity because I want to just give thanks for people who have been praying for me and walking with me for such a long time. And so I just, if, can I feed you? That's all I want to do. I just want to feed you and say thank you and that I love you. And I asked Rosemary if I could just come up here and give a special invitation. It is the third Sunday, which I believe is August 19th. 
written down. 19, 19. Yeah, August 19th, and immediately follow ser following service, if you could meet uh, me down in the narthex so we can have good eats and good fun, and I would just love to see your faces. Amen? Amen. 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 God is good. Oh, see, I can't help it. I'm so happy. <laughs> also, we have another special announcement from our own Miss Betty. Good morning, Trinity. Uh, just a little add-on about the picnic. We do have the sign-up sheets uh, for the picnic, uh, and we would really appreciate if you would sign up what you're going to bring. The sheets will be out in the narthex uh, today. And also, we are looking for members, um, volunteers to work on the hospitality team. Uh, a lot of our, some of our members will be traveling and won't be able to help out. So if you can help out on the hospitality team on that day, there is a space on the sign-up sheets for you to write your name and your contact information. Thank you. It's getting exciting. Like I said, we have a very busy month this month. Also, I would like to ask uh, Nautilin from the Jamaican Ministries to please come up. She has a little announcement to make also. Welcome back. Good morning, Trinity. Good morning. Oh boy, I gotta go back to Jamaica. Good morning, Trinity. Good morning. All right, we're warming up. We'll get to it. Um, I just want to give God thanks. Uh, we had our first international uh, Joshua's international education ministry for the first time this year in Jamaica. We were in Spanish Town. Um, it was held at the Pentecostal City Mission Church. That's a church that I grew up in in Jamaica. And I have to say that it was indeed a successful mission trip. All right, amen. Well, can I take a minute and just tell you why it is successful? Okay, well, it is successful. The plan was that uh, we started in May to collect supplies. The idea really came um, to me back in May um, through my friend, and we decided we we're going to do this. We wanted to sponsor 100 children with back-to-school supplies. And by the time we were done the morning of the event, we have 215 items wow, for God. children. Can we say thank you? Can we say thank you for that? In addition to that, we were able to give 40, uh, purchase 40 gift cards for the uh, bookstore so uh, the children can go to the bookstore and get some books. So can we say amen for that? Amen, amen. And we were also able to sponsor 10 children, five boys and five girls, for school uniforms by uh, providing that to the church. They have somebody who will be making those uniforms and providing it to 10, uh, to 10 children, five boys and five girls. So I want to give thanks for that. That's way more than I had planned in such a short space of time. So what do I need? We are going to do this. It's our first one. We want to continue this every year. And what we found out that mostly we need are backpacks. So back to school supplies mostly needed or backpacks. Um, there's also a sign outside in a box that you could contribute um, additional supplies as well as school books, compos composition books, pencils, um, erasers, sharpeners, simple things for the children um, through age 18. So we have basic school, which is like kindergarten, uh, middle school, and high school. Those are the three age groups that we're focusing on right now. So think about those ideas. Um, take a, a flyer that's out there. I think there's still more left outside there. So please, we're really looking for your support. Anything you want to donate, we will, we will appreciate it. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, church, is not God good? We can, and you bless, and God doubles it. Amen, amen. Okay, let's continue our announcements here. Okay, copies of the worship service are available immediately following the service. And a reminder to tune in to WYLL, 1160 AM at 7 PM every Sunday evening to listen to Rev. Life Lessons. The Compassion Center will be open today from 1 to 2, and Children's Church will meet immediately following the choir. 
At this time, I would like to welcome our first time visitors and returning friends. If we have anybody visiting today, will you please stand so we can give you a warm welcome? Oh, how wonderful. Welcome, God bless. Welcome, welcome. Could you please stay standing and the ushers will give you a card to fill out and you can place it into the uh, offertory when it comes around. All right, we've already covered that. Thought for the week. Now, I can't take credit for this. Stacy was supposed to do an, uh, the announcements, but she asked me if I would use this as the thought of the week. And I said, okay, it's, I thought it was really good. Try to be a rainbow in someone else's cloudy day. Amen? Let me read that again. Try to be a rainbow in somebody else's cloudy day. Amen? Have a blessed week. Amen. Oh, not quite done. <laughs> Leave it to Rosemary. Okay. We are happy to be in the Lord's House here at Trinity Baptist Community Church. Our pastor is Bishop Dr. Michael J. Love. Trinity is a teaching ministry of God's holy word. We touch, we share, we love and care. And thank God for this opportunity to praise and worship him. If you are looking for a church home when Bishop Love opens the doors of the church, feel free to give your hearts and hands to fellowship in Trinity. Amen. Have a blessed week, everybody. Let me take this moment and welcome everyone on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's so good to be in the Lord's house and uh, again to have this opportunity to worship and to praise him. And, and let me welcome our congregation joining us on our live uh, streaming broadcast. As we're praying that you'll be blessed by, uh, by something that takes place during this worship experience. It's always good to hear from you. Uh, we've got some great things on the calendar for the month. I'm really excited about the work that's taking place down in Jamaica. Thank you, Nautil. It's a, it's a beautiful outreach, and uh, we, we thank God for your leadership and for the impact it's having. And I'm always excited about our picnic coming up and, and uh, the chance to be able to break some bread together in fellowship after service on the fourth Sunday. So mark, that cal mark your calendar for that, and please invite your friends and families, neighbors, loved ones, who, you know, anyone to come and share the Trinity experience on that day. It's a great day of fun. We usually take about a couple hours afterwards and head out in the field and cook out and just have a good time of fun and games after worship on that, that day. So uh, mark it down and invite some friends and, and come and be here if you're, if you're not traveling on the weekend. Uh, we got the, and I thank you, First Lady, for giving us an opportunity to celebrate your graduation. So we're going to break some bread on that third Sunday uh, and have some friends, have some people come over to, to just join us down in, the, uh, down in the banquet hall, in the fellowship hall downstairs on that day from about 1.30 to, I guess, a couple hours worth of that until, until, until we kick you out. How about that? <laughs> it's, it's good to be in the Lord's house. So has the Lord blessed anybody this week? I, I need to hear from you as we get ready to worship God with our giving. Has he done anything worthy of any praise this week? Come on. Yeah, God is so good. Put it in Paul. Let's go. Come on here and start. We're going to lead. The choir is coming. We're going to worship God with our giving on this beautiful Sunday as we prepare for the breaking of the bread. morning Trinity God is good and he is worthy aren't you glad you don't sound glad let's try that again aren't you glad how glad mighty glad he's a good God he's good all the time not just sometime not every now and then but he's good when all the time amen it's giving time church and while I'm here um, Bonnie did it last week, but I want to personally thank each and every one of you that donated to the diaper drive. It was, again, like Nathan said, it was more than I hoped for. We were able to provide over a thousand diapers, <laughs> 50 plus packs of uh, baby wipes, 
and we had uh, three or four boxes of baby clothes. God is good. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You just don't know how much that meant to me. Thank you so much. It's giving time, and God said, and you told Pastor that God has blessed you this week. You look blessed to me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Acts 20, 35 says, In everything I did, I showed you by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remember the words of the Lord Jesus himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Amen. Let me tell you what giving does. Giving sets you free. Amen. 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 Giving changes the lives of others. I don't get an amen on that one. Okay, all right, it's all right. Giving brings blessings back to you. Amen. Giving allows you to store up treasures in heaven rather than here on earth. Amen. Isn't giving fun? It really is. It's giving time, church. Come on, ushers, let's come forward, please. Let us go before the throne of grace as we thank him for the giving that we're about to do, as we thank him for being able to give, because somebody cannot this morning. And I know that because he is such a God that supplies all our needs, that he knows our heart, that if you can't, he knows you have a desire. So we're going to thank God for the desire, amen? Father God, we come before you thank you this morning just first of all for waking us up, for letting us see this day. Father, you are kind, you are merciful, you are more than generous. You are such an awesome God that if I had 10,000 tongues, I could not thank you enough. God, you have given so much to us that we would count it robbery if we didn't give you back something. You only ask for a tenth, but Father, it is, it is be, be coming, up, uh, coming upon me, one of your servants, to give what I can give, be it financial, be it my time, be it your, my praise. Father, I can praise you all day for what you've done. So, Father, now as we come right now at giving time, I ask you to bless those who have it to give. Father, bless those who have a heart to give but may not have it. Father, we continue to thank you for you are truly worthy and mag a, such a magnificent God. You're worthy of our praise, worthy of all our praise. In Jesus' name, amen.
I just need to know if I've got a witness in the house today. Do I have one witness in the house today that Jesus never failed? No, no, really, do I have more than one witness in the house today? Is anybody in the house challenged by the world situation and no, try Jesus for yourself? And he showed up every single time. If you're willing to stand on your feet for a moment, let's give the Lord about 20 seconds worth of praise before we get into this word here. Jesus never failed. Jesus never failed. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Lord. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles, if you will. We are continuing. We're picking up once again with our sermon series. Uh, it's the fourth in this series from 1 Samuel. We're picking up again with chapter 17. Um, we're just going to spend a couple more weeks in this five sermon series. Uh, Lord willing, I mean, you know, the Lord changes my schedule whenever he chooses to, so if I end up spending more time with David, then you just blame it on the Lord. How about that? <laughs> Chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, our, our focus for this morning's time is taken from verses 38 through 47, and our key verse uh, is found in verse number 45. While you're turning there with your Bible, in your Bibles, we'll be putting uh, the 45th verse up on the screen for us to read together as a family, collectively as a family. Is that all right? We, we're going to have a little time, a little fun together in this word today. Uh, the New King James Version is on the screen. If you've got your version in your, in your Bibles, uh, give me an amen. If you don't mind standing with me, let's read this from the screen together. Uh, I think they've given us the New King James Version on the screen. Verse 45, as we read it together, says, Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel. Going to have to roll that down. Whom you have, roll, roll the rest of it for me. There you go. Whom you have defied. Is that worth reading twice? Come on, let's do that again. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. As you take your seat. Our sermon series is entitled Lessons in Kingdom Process, Preparation, and Productivity. Uh, we, we've been spending time over the fat past uh, several Sundays uh, with David as he's, or the young David, the early David, as he's gone from his time of being called and anointed of the Lord to be a future king, uh, as God has removed the mountain, removed the anointing from King Saul, and, uh, and took some time to look at how God not only prepares uh, his, his children for future service and, and, and impact, kingdom impact, but how he, he, he walks us through his kingdom process. Uh, we don't always pay a lot of attention uh, from the perspective of the Lord in the process that he's taking us through. We, 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 we get caught up in details and miss the big picture so many times, lose sight of where he's promised to take us. And, when we do that, we miss out on so many great, so many great license, lessons in life. And all of that is to lead to how does he indeed get us positioned for, uh, for what I've called kingdom productivity, uh, for fulfillment of his purpose and his plan in our lives. Uh, chapter 17, we spent some time uh, last uh, two Sundays ago as we were spending time in this, basically looking at how God had positioned David in the, house of, uh, in the house of Saul and giving him favor with the king as he was preparing him to be the future king and uh, how God used his giftedness and his talents to be a blessing in the midst of that setting and how David, in the, uh, when, when, when the challenges of life came, uh, how David uh, was able to draw on his faith and his trust in God's faithfulness to, 
to not only see him through when the questions of life came, when people challenged him, when Saul challenged him, when his brothers challenged him, basically saying, you're not worthy of the task. Why are you standing up and trying to take this, this on yourself? And it's so important for us to, to keep our minds focused on who God says we are uh, when the world around us is, is, is attempting to redefine our personhood and our, and our, our position and, and our purpose in life. Can, can I preach this thing like I'm at home today? I've only got two life lessons that I want to share with you today. I've got to, as is normal for me, I tend to drop about three sub points underneath of each life lesson. So I guess that in essence really makes it six, doesn't it? But, but I've got two general life lessons that I want to share with you today. And they come from the opening of this. Let me read verse 38 in the Amplified, 38 through, uh, 38 through 40, I believe it is, in the Amplified Bible that lays the groundwork for the first life lesson. We're picking up the story again after Saul had, had kind of agreed to David that, you know, you go and do this and may the Lord be with you. And uh, David has told him, I've got experience at this. He said, what, 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 what makes you think you can fight this, this seasoned warrior, this, this Goliath guy, this giant of a man? And David had to remind him, remind, uh, or to refresh, or even to reveal to King Saul that, you know, in, in my experiential realm here. I've, I've had the opportunity, even as a shepherd boy, to fight off a lion and to fight off a bear when the sheep were attacked. And, and, and the same, you know, this same God who protected me and guided me and gave me wisdom and gave me strength and, and preserved the sheep and kept me safe in the midst of that is the same God that's going to fight the battle for me as I go forward. So let me pick up with 38. It says, then Saul clothed David with his armor and put a bronze helmet on his head. I'm in the Amplified. Uh, the New King James will be on the screen for you, I believe. And clothed him with a coat of mail. And David girded up his sword over his armor. Uh, then he tried to go, but he could not, for he was not used to it. <laughs> and David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I am not used to them. And David took them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in his shepherd's, the amplifier said, his shepherd's lunch bag. <laughs> a whole kid, in parentheses, it says a whole kid's skin slung over his shoulder. And in his script, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Let me give you this first life, first life lesson as we, we're coming together around this for your, for your information. When preparing for life's battles, remember that God has divinely positioned you for this service. Remember that God has uniquely equipped you for these challenges. And remember that God has graciously empowered you for this victory. Y'all going to let me preach today? Remember that God has divinely positioned you for this service. Remember God has uniquely put, equipped you for, this, for these challenges. And remember that God has graciously empowered you for this victory. Saul has agreed now, after hearing David share his testimony... And the, and the foundation of his faith and the God of the universe. He has agreed, go out there, son, and, and fight the battle. But then Saul does something, as the storyline tells us, that's interesting. Saul thinks that, that Saul is a warrior. Saul is, has been an accomplished warrior, the, the, the text tells us, as you read back a few chapters. Uh, he, he, he's a battle-proven warrior. Uh, it, it, it moved him to the position that they thought he was this great Man, and, he's, and they wanted him to be king over the people. And so, in Saul's experiential knowledge and, and, his, and his background, his realm of, of, of knowledge and, and experience, he says, this is the way you go to battle against a, 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 a giant, overwhelming warrior. He says, this is the way that you are successful uh, when you're going out to fight the battle in life and in the world. And he says, in order for you, young man, you, you got experience with the bear and the, and the lion, but in order for you, to, in, his, in King Saul's opinion, to go out and fight this battle and have some probability of success, 
You need to put on the armor like I put on to go to battle. How many of us know that you can't put on somebody else's armor and fight your battle? Wait a minute, I just said something there. You, you <laughs> so he tells him, put, put, this, put this stuff on, and David's obedient. David's reflecting of authority, I mean, respecting of authority. So he puts on, King says, put on the armor. David puts on the armor. Uh, but, 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 but David knows something that Saul apparently doesn't quite understand at this point. David recognizes that God has uniquely positioned him uh, for, this, for this, this service, for this, this event in time. He's got a calling on him. He's got an anointing on him. David has to be thinking to himself now, Samuel, the prophet, uh, has, the priest has anointed me to be a future king. And somewhere between uh, my anointing and my kingship, there's going to be some challenges. Uh, somewhere between where God has identified who I am and, and to where God is going to position me to do what I'm called to eventually do, there are going to be some challenges, some wilderness experiences, some challenges in life, some obstacles that I have to face and go through. And, and the obstacles only look like opportunities if I'm standing with God in his plan. And so if I'm going to fight the battles that, that the world puts in front of me, uh, uh, who am I going to lean on? Am I going to trust in the armor of a king, or am I going to trust in the plan of my God? Help me out, somebody. And so Saul, Saul King Saul puts the armor on him. David says, this, I can't work with this. This, 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 this fits you. This, this is nice. This, this, this is nice. This, this looks all nice, this fits, this, but it doesn't fit me. It doesn't fit me, nor does it fit the mission. And so he gives uh, what I would call a 90-second tutorial to the king. He says, I, I can't work with this. And I have to take this off. You know, it made me flash back to, to, to some of my earlier athletic days. And uh, it, 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 back when I was playing college basketball, it would be like my coach putting Shaquille's tennis shoes out in front of me. And saying, put your feet in these and go out there and play. I'd have to say, but those are shack shoes. <laughs> They're not love shoes. Shaq might be able to perform in those shoes, but love's gonna get lost in those shoes. Shaq ain't gotta do the quick kick cuts and go to the hoop real fast. Shaq just kind of needs to stand there and pivot up and muscle to the room. And size 16 shoes don't need to move quick. But a 5'10 point guard needs to get to the hoop. David says, I can't go in this. He said, you, you look good in this, you fight well in this, but that's not the armament that will be successful for my journey. Here's, 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 here's my takeaway. Here's, here's a good takeaway for you, I think. You, we, you and I, in this fallen world that we live in, are going to face challenges. Even as we come to the clarity of understanding who God says we are and what God has put in front of us in the way of a kingdom purpose, as that begins to unfold in our lives and we begin to unpack it, and have a sense of, of why am I here and where am I going and, and what's the purpose of my being and my direction. They're, 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 even as you get a clear image and vision for that, the, the, the world will have a tendency to toss obstacles in the way. Uh, the enemy wants to put challenges out in front of you. But the reality of your vision mode is that you begin to recognize that if God has called me and anointed me and positioned me, then indeed he has a purpose for the plan he's unfolding in my life. And as he unfolds the plan of my life, he's taking me somewhere. There's a place he says I'm going to end up being if I just faithfully follow him. And I can't follow him wearing somebody else's clothes. I can't follow him with somebody else's equipment. I came by to tell you today that you are uniquely and wonderfully made. And God has a specific purpose for the talents and the spiritual gifts that he's given unto you. It's not to be somebody else. You can't talk like somebody else. You can't sing like somebody else. 
somebody else. You can't be what somebody else is. God has uniquely and wonderfully made you to be the wonderful you that you are. Don't try to put anybody's life over top of yours. This is your journey. This is your walk of faith. Not only does he, does he position you for, uh, to be, be serving in this particular moment in time, but he, not only has he uniquely equipped you to be able to fight this particular challenge. I, I, let me drop a pin there for a second because, you know, we don't, sometimes we don't recognize, we don't always recognize uh, God's handiwork uh, in our lives. When we, when we face challenges in life. It's a funny thing, psychologically, how we, how we have a tendency uh, uh, to, to look everywhere else but at the Lord when tough stuff happens to us. Am, am I in the house? You know, we, we get the worrying, we get doubtful, we get fearful. I mean, it's the human, it's this human element. It's, it's, a, it's, it's the impact of a falling nature on us. So, you know, the flesh, the carnality of, of humanity. And we, 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 tend to, we tend to worry. God has told you. You're my child. We're trying to redefine who you are. We let some of that stuff wash over us like it really is the truth. But inside of you, you know that's not the truth. You are who God says you are. Huh? And just because bad stuff happens to God's people, doesn't mean anything uh, other than God has a beautiful way of using our test to bring out powerful testimonies. <laughs> he has this magnificent way of using the mess that's operating in our lives to bring out the powerful message of his goodness, his gracious, and his glory and mercy operating in our lives. And so, and so when we face that, well, we, we don't want to face it uh, trying to lean on somebody else's storyline. Oh, I'm about to move on. I know you need me to move on quicker than that. I can't, I can't go on what, what my ancestor did because he or she's not facing what I face today. And, he, and, and I love the beauty of how he gives us, uh, uh, gives, God gives us this clarity of, uh, he gave David this, he, what I would call a clarity, um, a clarity of mission. Not only of his whoness, but his purpose. And, and a, a reality of sensing that when God says uh, that you're victorious, <laughs> even before you see the victory, on, you can rejoice. Yeah, yeah. And you can be bold yeah. in your rejoicing. Come on, y'all clap like y'all. Come on, come on. Somebody knows better than I know somebody knows that in the house. But see, if you believe that you, if you really believe that, I'm going to just challenge your family here because you, you, you're my family. If, 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 if we really believe that, then we need to walk in it like we believe it. We, we need, because just as soon, help me, let me help you out. Just as soon as you walk outside of these four walls and you finish, we finish clapping and shouting for the Lord, uh, the enemy's going to probably toss something right on your plate. You're going you're, you're, you're gonna, oh, gonna to be reflect back into, well, wait a minute, I still, I just came out of here worshiping the God of the universe and shouting about how good he is and, and, and reminded about his purpose and plan for my life and reminded about who I am in the midst of this journey uniquely and wonderfully made. And now that I stepped outside of all of this family time and worship and community and praise and study, I step out to the, into the economy of the world, the marketplace of the world, and I just remembered all that mess that I had out there waiting for me out there. Well, I stepped into some new mess that I didn't anticipate stepping into. Now, Lord, where are you, Lord? I need you. Well, you. The Lord is the same place he's always been. You just need to stop moving your mindset and all of your faith walk because God is still in the journey and he's still making great things happen. David says, I got to take this stuff off. This doesn't work for me. And, and, and David David reached back, uh, the, the, the Amplified writer said, David reached back and, and, and fell out in the brook. He went, to, he went to what God had trained him to do. He'd equipped him mightily as a shepherd and a warrior. You remember when they, when they, when they recommended David to come and sue Saul, one of the descriptors was that this young man is a, valid, a, a man of valor and a mighty warrior. 
at 17, you know, killing the bear and the lion. So he went back to the things that God had given him wisdom to use uh, that looked uniquely inappropriate to us. He grabbed five stones, and smooth, out of a brook and put them in his shepherd's bag. And he went out and he drew near to the Philistine. The same Philistine that's been shouting derogatory statements towards that army of Israel for like 40 days. Same Philistine that had them shaking in their boots. Same Philistine that's just standing tall with his brass and his armor flashing in the sunlight. Got all the warriors, nobody's stepping up. That same Philistine. I don't see Saul or Jonathan stepping out there either. You know, these mighty warriors, I mean, they, they could have stepped out there. Nobody's moving because of this Philistine. And what does David do rather than put on the armor? He, 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 keeps, he puts on his shepherd guard, <laughs> grabs him a slingshot, five smooth stones, and he goes toward his life challenge. See, if when, when we, and I won't be long, but when, 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 we, when we're faced with it, the moment-by-moment moment challenges of life, we got to step out like we know who we are. And that's who God says we are. Christ says we are. And we got to step out with the assurance that if God has promised us wisdom, protection, power and victory that we can step out on his word and be assured that he will accomplish what he sent us to do. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? That, that, that's the definition of victory. It's not our definition of victory. But do, are we doing, are we he will accomplish what he sent us to do. And don't be ashamed as you draw near to your challenge. Don't be scared to walk up on your obstacle and dare to call it an opportunity. I need to carry on. I got several more verses. I'm going to pack it in real quick here now. 40, 41 through 40, uh, I think I closed out at 47. Let me just read it in the Amplified so you get the storyline. Philistine came up and drew near to David, the man who the man who bore the shield going, shield going before this Philistine. And when the Philistine looked around and saw David, he scorned and despised him, for he was but an, an adolescent uh, with a healthy, <laughs> amplified spirit, with a healthy reddish color and a fair face. <laughs> He's a kid. And the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you should come to me with sticks? Philistine cursed David by his, by his own gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David, then said David to the Philistine, he says, it's my turn now. You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the God, the Lord of hosts, the God of the ranks of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will smite you and I cut off your head. I will, give, <laughs> I will give the corpse of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. Why? That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And not only that, and that all this assembly shall know that the Lord says, 47, not with the sword and with the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give it, give you into our hand. Ooh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. <laughs> Wait a minute, I need y'all to, I need a Selah moment here. I need a Selah moment. That's good stuff. You, you need to pause and meditate on that right there. Huh? <laughs> if mom was on the keyboard, I'd have to tell you, you got to play a little music on that, because we just got to meditate on that just for a moment. 
Because if you grab that, I'm going to get to my life lesson. If you grab the essence of that message, I'm telling you, it will transform not only you, but your life, your journey. It will give you new eyes as you look at everything that you come in contact with, every obstacle that you face, every question that you come in, comes before you, every challenge that attempts to weight you down. It will give you victory in the midst of whatever you're facing today because you can march forward knowing that the God of the universe is your daddy and he's on your side. Life lesson two. Life lesson two. When approaching life's battles, remember, never accept the enemy's lies. Secondly, never fear the battle's sides. And finally, always trust God and his promised prize. Yeah. You know, I was in a rhyming mood late last night, so <laughs> I had to stay there so I got that final word to rhyme, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Never accept the enemy's lies. Never fear the battle's size and always trust God and his promised prize. <laughs> Goliath stands nine feet, nine inches roughly tall in the ballpark. Glitter, glistening, brass, just sunlight hitting off of that and just radiating all over the place. Got his armor bearer in front of him. You know, so if anybody's going to take a blow, it's going to be this runt here holding my sword and my shield. But you're not going to get to me. And he's out there, you know, he's been victorious all through his journey. He's just, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's probably, obviously he's never lost a battle. He's still standing. And he's just, he's got that, He's got that, that, that ungodly arrogance about him. He, yeah, you, 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 you've been around folk who just got that, that pride and arrogance, and they think they just know it all, and they think they, they've got it all. They think they're just all powerful. They, you come talk to me, somebody. You, you've been around folk who think, man, you, who look down their noses at, at you as a believer in Christ Jesus and think, now, how can you possibly rely on God and rely on this Jesus? I mean, my goodness. That's a, you know, that, that faith thing of yours is like a poor, like a, like a weak man's crutch. You got to have a God. I don't need a God. I'm strong enough and big enough to do my own thing out here all by myself. And I dare you to challenge me in the midst of my walk. And you know, what, what do you need faith for? You just need to believe in yourself. You don't need to believe in a God of the universe. It's that kind of arrogance. As he stands up with his victories running, his victories all in the background laid out in front of him saying, I've got all these victories, and challenging all of Israel saying, send me a man. Don't send me a runt. Send me a man out here and let us do battle one-on-one -on -one so that we don't have to kill everybody. And then, and then whoever wins will be in charge. And then when David comes prancing out, not with his armor on, not challenging him in the, in, in the very area of his strength, but coming out looking like a little shepherd boy with a bag slung over his, he's that Goliath is wondering, what you got in there? You got a few sack, you got some sardines, a few loaves of bread, you got your sack lunch in there, boy, because you didn't come out here to fight. What are you sending me? You said, you, you, you know, I'm up here, you sending me some little kid out here. This must be a joke. Is this camera, candid camera? And, and he's just spewing out all of the disrespect to, 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 to not only David, to Israel, and to the God of the universe. He's spewing it out at him. And, and, and he's, all that he can get out of his mouth, he's, he's trying to bring fear, bring fear into the, into the mind, into the heart of this young David as he comes out to face this well-accomplished and battle-proven warrior called Goliath. Now tell me if you've ever had anything like that happen. For, you, for the obstacle that you're facing, the challenge that you're facing feels like it's absolutely be, be beyond anything you've ever had to deal with. It's, it's, it's larger than anything you've ever had to wrestle with in your journey. And therefore you get caught up in the size of the battle. It, 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 it brings about fear inside of you because you get the wondering, you get the thinking in our humanity, the worst case scenario. You know how we do. Fear, fear just wells up 
And, and if it hasn't happened to you or happened to somebody around you, you probably saw it on the internet. And you start thinking, man, if that could happen to them, maybe that could happen to me. And it has this tendency to paralyze you if you're not careful in your walk. And the Lord is saying, but don't accept the lie. That's, that's the lie of the enemy. Don't accept that lie. That's not my plan. That's not my purpose. And somewhere in the midst of David's walk, he has to accept. He has to have believed in his heart, Brother Dickon. That enemy, I know that's a lie because my God just anointed me to be a future king. And I'm not a king yet. <laughs> are y'all with me? I, I need you to get it. He says, this is who I am, and he says, this is what I will do. And I just started this journey. So either, if, 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 if this giant is truthful, then my God is a liar. Because I'm a king in waiting. I'm a king in preparation. And all that stands between me and God's fulfillment of his promise right now for me is Goliath. And Goliath comes and tries to bring all of his force, of his, of, of his lying, uh, you know, all of his verbalism, all of his verbal abuse, all of his lying to it. And then finally David, you know, this brother had a little, this brother had a little hood in him. I know he did. I can hear it. He, he's talking. You know, I was, wait, I was waiting for the, you know, before, I was waiting for David to say, and your mama is. <laughs> it, it, it was that kind of thing. <laughs> it's like, okay, are, are, you, are you all done with that? Are, are you finished with what you got to say? Because here's what the Lord told me yeah. to tell you. Huh? And David... I mean, David, David just goes into detail. I mean, he just, it's like, hey, I got all the time I need to tell you exactly what God tells me. Let me, let me tell you. I'm going to tell you in detail, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your head off. I'm going you know, to give it to the birds. You know, we're going to kill out all your folk. And, it's that, and why are we going to do it? I'm, I'm even going to tell you the why. I'm not only going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you why. So that all you folk out there can know that the God of the universe is a God of Israel and he's real. Yeah. I don't know what you're worshiping out there, but my God sent me for it. And, and how do I know this is going to happen? Because, again, I'm back to the fundamentals. The fundamentals of this is God says, oh, I am. I'm at point A in the journey, and this is what God says I'm going to do, which is point Z in the journey. And, and now I'm just in the process. Can you trust God's process? I'm in the process of becoming. I'm, in, I'm only at point B in the process of getting to point Z. And so if you, think that, if you think that you can stand in the way of an almighty God getting his anointed servant from point A to point Z, I came by to tell you that you're about to lose something big in your journey. A anybody getting that? Always keep your eye on God and his prize because the world is going to try to bombard you with its lies and the size of the obstacle to distract us, to distort our message, and to even destroy us. But I came by to tell you that in the midst of this, God is saying this message is not just for you. Because as David says, this isn't just for me. This is so that we, we got an audience here. He covers the audience. He says, so that you may know, so that all, first of all, all you pagans might know that God is the God of his people. He's faithful to his people. And for all, and for all you Israelites out there who've been trembling in your boots, you, you, you need a word of encouragement. God sent me to let you know that he is your God. And he's promised you the victory. And he says, and just, just in case somebody's writing this down, David said, just, just in case somebody's recording this for history, this is so that all the world might know that God is the God and he's faithful. He's the one and only and he's faithful. We're going to get to the battle next week. But there's something 
about God's preparation. And I never want to hurry through his process. So unpacking how God positions us for the journey and who we are in the journey gives us Selah time. I need you to take the week and have some Selah time about just where you are in your walk of faith and just what obstacles may be trying to steal your joy and distort your image of who God is and what he's promised and where he's taken you. And in the midst of that, I want you to recognize that God has divinely positioned you for this service. I want you to keep in mind that God has uniquely equipped you for these challenges. I need you to stand firm on the reality that God has graciously empowered you for this victory that you're about to experience. And when you have that foundation firmly planted inside of you and you're leaning and standing on that thing, I want you to go out and face your giants all week long, remembering that it's important for you to never, never, ever accept the enemy's lies. He's going to come at you. He's probably already trying to plant some stuff in your head before you get out of here. And then I need you to, 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 to walk out there and say, okay, I know that my journey looks difficult and the, and the battle looks like, but never, never accept, never get fearful of the battle size. Never fear that. And then because God always ends up his message with good news. We, 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 we're not preaching a morning breath message. This isn't a hang your head breath message. This isn't, you know, I'm so low that God can't ever pick me up type of message. Uh, th th this, is, this, is, this is one of those messages that wants to enforce inside of you that, you know, what Paul would say, you know, not only greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, but that, that you're more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. This is one of those messages. This is one of those messages that David would write down a little later in one of his psalms and say, I know that, that mankind trusts in horses and chariots and horses, but I'm going to put my trust in the God of the universe because he's faithful. It's that kind of message. And with that in mind, we want to always trust God and his promised prize. And so if I get like Paul, I'm saying I'm not pressing, I'm not looking towards the things that have been in the past. I'm not trying to reach back and grab the luggage of my infidelities. I'm going to look forward to the God Almighty and press. I'm going to press sweatingly, not in shack shoes, but in my shoes. I'm going to run toward the mark for the high calling in Christ Jesus, knowing that he has promised me the victory. Anybody in the house victorious today? Anybody in the house victorious today? Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with this beautiful day you've given us of worship, this fresh opportunity to come to your house of prayer and to be family, united uh, in the precious name of Jesus. Uh, pour into us your word, Lord, and your presence and your power, giving us fresh new assurance and hope not only of who you are, but that you have uniquely and wonderfully made us with a purpose and a plan in mind. We thank you. As we face life's challenges, Lord, we know that they're only challenges and that you're more than able and willing to see us through and bless us all the way through and on the other side, Lord. Thank you in advance for what you're doing, who you are, and all that you have in store for us. We look forward to the victory and the process. For it's in Jesus' holy name we give you glory, honor, and praise. God's people in the house said amen. amen. If you don't mind standing with me, we're going to open up the doors of the church and extend an invitation if you're here today to be a part of the Trinity family. It's a simple step of faith of coming down front and letting us welcome you home on your Christian experience. Lord, as a candidate for baptism, our new members directors are here to receive you. Our arms are open and extended to you right now, today. Just come. There's nothing better. Than knowing Jesus. Knowing Jesus. He gets to pick you up, pick you up and turn your life around. 
ought to know him. You ought to know him. Get to know him. Get to know him. Right now, today, just come. The doors of the church are open. The invitation and membership is extended to you. There's nothing better. The Lord's touching your heart. Take a step of faith today. The anointing. He gets sweeter as the days go by. He gets sweeter as the days go by. You ought to know him. You ought to know him. Get to know him. Right now or today, just come. The arms open, we say, come on, come on, come on, as the music plays. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, right now, today. One more time, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank you so much, ladies. As you take your seats and the deacons and ministers come to join me for our time of communion, preparing our hearts and minds. to see that the Lord is good. share in this communion celebration and moment. As Jesus gathered in the upper room during the Passion Week, during the final week of his earthly existence, life, with his gathering in an upper room on Passover with his closest disciples, the text tell us that he took the bread and broke it and blessed it and said, this is my body broken, which is given for you. 
likewise he took the cup and having blessed it he said this represents this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for the remission of your sins as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup you show forth my death till I come again each and every first Sunday, Lord willing, as we gather together as family, we have an opportunity to share and reflect and to give thanks that God would love each and every one of us so much that he would give his only begotten son. That we who believe in him shall not, will not, cannot perish but have life everlasting. Life everlasting. So as you bow our heads together, we bless the sacrament and we prepare to receive it. We invite each and every believer to join in this time with us. Father God, we are so thankful for this beautiful day. This is another Lord's day that you've given us. You kept us safe and woke us up this morning. You led us to your house, Lord, giving us this opportunity to worship and to study and to praise and to sing and to just give you glory and to say thank you, Lord, as you prepared us to continue to serve you in the precious name of Jesus. So now as we share in this communion, as we receive the elements, we're asking your blessing upon the elements we're about to receive and bless us as we receive them. Always mindful of the great gift that you have provided, the sacrificial gift in your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins and rose on the third day, that we would have the hope and assurance of life everlasting and more abundantly. In, the, in Jesus' holy and precious name, we pray it all and we give you thanks. And all God's children in the house are saying, Amen and Amen. Would you hold your elements until all are served, please?
body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken, which was given for you. Let's eat together. Representing the blood of our Lord and Savior, shed for the remission of all our sins, past, present, and future. Let's drink together. Get to say it after they shared the Passover meal. They went out to the Mount of Olives singing as we recover the old cups, the used cups. Yeah. Victory is mine as we stand to our feet. some praise in the house then. Come on. Give him some praise in the house. Okay. As you take your neighbor by the hand and we close with our benedictory prayers. Thanking God for this fantastic day that he has blessed us with. With our heads bowed and with our eyes closed and our hearts humbled before the living God as we assume an attitude of prayer and we lift our hands to him in praise. Now unto him who is able to keep you and me from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now henceforth and forevermore let all God's people say amen, amen. and amen. Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Lord God Almighty. God in three persons. God in three persons. Blessed. Blessed Trinity. God bless you and God keep you. Give somebody a holy hug before you leave. And invite someone new to the church family next Sunday.